Hello everyone, welcome to my video on elementary differential equations. This is video number two for chapter five, and the topic of this chapter is the Laplace transform. In the previous video, we defined the Laplace transform and took a couple of very simple examples. So let's recall the definition. The definition of a Laplace transform is the following. For a given function f of t, for t bigger than 0, the Laplace transform is defined as follows. We call it capital F of s and equal to this fancy L for Laplace transform of the function f t is defined as follows. Integral from 0 to infinity e to the negative s t times f t dt. And this infinite um, integral can be interpreted as integrating from 0 to a and then take the limit a goes to infinity. Okay, but we will use this notation as uh, to be simpler as it does not um, contribute to confusions. So we'll take a couple more examples of uh, computing the Laplace transform of given functions using the definition. The first example in this video is um, to compute the Laplace transform of sine and cosine function. Let's say sine of at and cosine of at. Um, there are various ways of achieving this. The first method would be computed directly by definition and then you will end up um, with an integral of e to the negative st times sine at dt integrating that and you know that integral will involve an um, integration by parts and you have to do that twice and uh, quite a bit of work in the end you will reach the Laplace transform of sine and then for cosine you have to carry out that procedure one more time integration by parts twice lots of work okay so I encourage you to try that as a practice but in this video we will try something else okay so in this video um, we will use the um, Euler's formula connecting the sine cosine function with the exponential function with the complex variables. So Euler's formula says um, e to the i a t where i is the imaginary number and this exponential function in the end is a sine and cosine in the complex um, value. So the real part is cosine a t and the imaginary part is uh, this is the i in the front is the sine a t okay then um we use the following property that is the laplace transform of this function here the exponential with the imaginary um to the power the here will be the laplace transform of this whole thing where this is a function and this is a function and this is a complex number so we use a property which we will talk about later and possibly um, prove it. It's actually um, a very simple proof. That's a linear property. That means the Laplace transform of this would equal to the Laplace transform of each and add them up. And you can even pull out the constant um, outside in the front. Okay, so the Laplace transform of this function here will also become a complex valued in the in the transformed space where this is the real part plus i times this is the imaginary part. So the reason we do that is um we already have computed Laplace transform for the exponential function e to the some uh, a t where a is a real number and that actually can be extended to any um, number in front of the e with e, even complex okay so um by using that formula just uh, replacing the a here with i a 
then the Laplace transform of the exponential function here would be 1 over s minus i a, where i is the imaginary number. Okay, so um, so this would work um, with the restriction on the s, so we, we need to have s bigger than 0, then this works. Okay, so we now manipulate um, this expression, writing it out as real part plus in imaginary part. So we can multiply both denominator and numerator by the um, complex conjugate of this, so which is s plus i a and s plus i a. Okay, by doing that, then we will have um, the denominator will become s square plus a square and that's a real number and the numerator is still a complex number okay then we can now break up the numerator and into real part and imaginary part and write the whole thing as the real part is s over that plus the imaginary part is i and then a over that okay and then now we can um, compare the real part and the imaginary part. We see that this is the real part and which corresponds to this real part so they must match each other. So by this way we obtain the um, Laplace transform or cosine of AT will be S over S squared plus A squared. And then um, similarly one can get compare the imaginary part. So these two must match, so we get a um, Laplace transform of the sine at is now a over s squared plus a squared. Okay, and the restriction is s is bigger than zero. Okay, so now we have added um, two more um, Laplace transforms in our collection. So um, sometimes your function is not continuous. It might be only piecewise continuous. For these functions, we can also compute the Laplace transform. And then you will have to break up the integral and integrate on each integral where the function is defined continuously and then add them up at the end. We'll take an example. Okay, so now let's use the definition and uh, find the Laplace transform of this function f, which is defined as follows. Um, for t between 0 and 2, f is 1, and then for t bigger than 2, the function is t minus 2. Okay, so per definition, this is the definition of the Laplace transform, and then this f is defined on two intervals differently. One is from 0 to 2, and the other is t bigger than 2. So we'll break up the integration into two parts, from 0 to 2, and from 2 to plus infinity. So for 0 to 2, that interval, f is 1, so this is multiplied by 1, which we don't write. And then for t bigger than 2, f is t minus 2, and that's what we put here. Okay, then we just need to work out um, the um, integrals. So for the first one, integrating the exponential, we get 1 over negative s, e to the negative st, and the limit is t from 0 to 2. And then for the second one, we need to do one round of integration by parts. Okay, so we take t minus 2 here, and the antiderivative of this, which is that, and t from 2 to infinity, minus um, integral from 2 to, sorry, that's an infinity, it's a leftover. Okay, and then from 2 to infinity of uh, um, this function here, times the derivative of that, which is 1. Okay, we can now evaluate um, when t equals 
2, we get e to the negative 2s. When t is 0, we get 1. So that's for the first term. And the second term here, when t is infinity, it's 0. When t is 2, it's 0. So it's 0. And then we need to integrate one more time this exponential function. So I will get 1 over s, take it out, and negative negative is positive. An integrate of this is 1 over negative s e to the negative s t, and t is from 2 to infinity. OK, and then evaluate this. I will get um, 1 over s squared with a negative sign, and then um, at infinity, it's 0, and at 2 is e to the negative 2s. And then I get a positive sign because the negative sign cancels the negative sign. So this is my Laplace transform. Um, let me put in the remark here that um, later in this chapter, we will use a different method to deal with the discontinuous or piecewise continuous functions. Okay, so this is a way of finding it, and later on there is another way and based on some interesting properties of the Laplace transform. So just to put a remark here, this is not the only way. Okay, so let's summarize um, all the Laplace transforms we have computed so far. So we have now, these three are from previous videos, now we added two more functions, cosine and sine, which is uh, these two expressions and valid for s bigger than zero. Okay, so um, that's all um, for this video, just these two examples, and next time we will look at properties of Laplace transform and a whole lot more of other stuff. Okay, hope you enjoyed this one. I'll see you next time.